Right, morning, everybody. Uh, there we go. We're online. So uh, I'm uh, Ben Edgington. Um, I self-identify as a writer and podcaster. Um, <laughs> right, we're talking about uh, KZG commitments. I was deeply conflicted in preparing this talk, whether to go with KZG commitments, which is obviously correct, or the uh, more popular KZG. We're going with KZG because it's slightly easier to say. Um, so what problem are we trying to solve? It sounds very mysterious, right, KZG commitment. What prob uh, and my job here is to convince you that it is actually straightforward and not scary at all. So we'll, we'll start with a problem statement. Given a largish amount of data, these are the blobs uh, that Proto was uh, talking about, the, the blob transactions. So this is about 128 kilobytes. Um, we want to do two things. We want to be able to commit to that data succinctly. So we want a short digest, which is linked to that data, represents that we um, uh, know what it is and can't change it. And we want later to be able to prove values um, in that data set. So we can prove that the value at position 10 in that data set was 27, or, or whatever it might be. So we can do this with Merkle trees. We know how to do this. It's tried and tested. So committing succinctly to a data in a Merkle tree is easy. That's 32 byte root of the tree. Um, and we can also construct proofs uh, that we know what a leaf of the tree is, which is a Merkle proof. Uh, but they tend to be a bit larger. So um, log the, the width of the tree. So 384 bytes if in, in this scenario. With the KCG commitments, um, we can also do both, so we can commit succinctly. So 48 bytes is a, um, is a commitment to a tree. That's an elliptic curve point, uh, but you don't need to know that. Uh, and within the protocol, we can further hash that down to 32 bytes, so it's, it's equivalent. But where the real value comes from is making these proofs. So uh, we can prove any element in the, in the uh, data set using just 48 bytes. And we can also use 48 bytes, just the same succinct size, to prove any number of elements. So you can aggregate these proofs. So that's why we uh, want to do this. What is a KTG commitment then? Well, um, Vitalik's head on Danny Ryan's body says, um, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. Just treat it like some kind of specialized hash function that's got some, some nice properties. Um, Nonetheless, what's happening under the hood is that uh, we have this data set um, and we convert it to a polynomial. It's a polynomial commitment, and we do that using fast Fourier transforms. In protocol, we don't need to worry about that. That's the L2 people's problem. Um, and then this polynomial, we commit to it by evaluating it at a, a, a random point, and we don't know what that point is. It's a secret. Uh, and that represents our entire polynomial. Of course, it represents any number of polynomials, but the chance of anyone stumbling across the same one as us is infinitesimal. And we generate this random point that nobody knows via a trusted uh, setup ceremony. There are two functions that we, we uh, need to be aware of. There's the commitment, which is taking the blob of data and making um, a KZG commitment out of it. Um, so we have the blob, and it's kind of blob shapes. That's our. Uh, 128 kilobytes of data. We have the trusted setup, which is just a set of elliptic curve points. Uh, and we, we zip the, the two of them together. So that's um, making the KZG commitment. The commitment's in the middle. It's in an ellipse. That's how you know it's an elliptic curve point. Uh, it's 48 bytes when serialized. Um, and then we take, um, for convenience, uh, a hash of that to uh, because the EVM is not very good at dealing with 48-byte objects, so we hash it down to 32 bytes. And this is what hashes look like in my brain. So um, that's the end. Uh, and the point is, the point for this audience is this is really easy. Um, this is three lines of code, or it might be one line of code if you've got a, li a, a crypto library that supports this. The Blast library uh, implements a uh, Pippinger multiscalar multiplication, and it just does this. It's, it's very, very simple. The other thing we need to do is, is what's called an opening, which is a bit pretentious. It's verifying a proof. It's like a Merkle proof. So we have our polynomial, but it's represented by our commitment. Um, we have two values. We have an x value, which is the location we want to prove the value at. We have the y, which is the value we believe ought to be in that position. And we have our proof, which is like a Merkle proof, but in this case, it's an elliptic curve point. 
um, that, that's constructed by the person who um, makes a proof. And then we have this verify function. And this is a little bit of elliptic curve arithmetic and a call to the pairing function where the, the magic happens. And it's very complicated, and we don't need to worry about it at all because it's just a black box. Um, so in EIP 4844, again, the code is in there, and it's three lines long. So both execution side and consensus side will need to make some changes to take advantage of this um, KZG commitment uh, technology. Uh, on the execution side, um, there are two pre-compiles, and these are for the use of rollups. So uh, there's a blob verification pre-compile, and that's just blob to KZG. So it's making this commitment. Um, and this is useful primarily for optimistic rollups. And then we've got this point evaluation precompile. So this is verifying that we know the value. The data we have is the correct data for that, uh, that point. So that's a wrap around verify KZG proof. So two precompiles. Uh, there's an extra opcode, which is trivial. It's just looking up um, one of the commitments that we have in, um, in a block. And um, when verifying a transaction that a user has submitted that contains a blob, we need to check that the, K the KZG commitment is correct, which again is the same as a blob verification precompile. So under the hood, it's the same code. On consensus side, and this is a lot more familiar because we're all already using BLS 12.381 elliptic curve libraries because we have this BLS signature scheme. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the consensus clients are using Blast library, though I'm not 100% certain, but yep, I'm getting nods uh, on that. Um, we need to add wrappers, primitives um, to them because the Blast library itself doesn't provide these off-the-shelf functions, but we need to add our kind of three lines of code, blob to KZG. Um, KZG to version hashes is taking a hash of 48 bytes, which is trivial. We don't need the uh, verification of proofs. We don't need to do the openings um, on the consensus side. We just need to check that the blobs match their commitment. Um, and also, when we gossip blocks and so on, uh, we need to check that. Um, so how do we, just to summarize kind of where things happen and how we build this, we have a, um, a library, elliptic curve library, BLS 12381 curve. At the bottom, that's off the shelf and black boxed. Um, we have code to implement commitments on top of that. We have code to implement the verification on top of that. And then the, uh, on the roll-up side, an outer protocol, creating blobs you do with fast Fourier transforms, proof generation is just some elliptic curve uh, arithmetic. And actually, kind of in better proportion, it looks like this. We're just, you know, KZG commitments are just a very thin layer on top of this big library that already exists. Um, what is the current state of the art? There are a bunch of stuff around. Um, I'm not aware of everything. I put in bold the stuff which is either production ready or there or thereabouts. So on the BLS library level, Blast is, has become kind of standard um, in the consensus world. There's also Harumi. There's Noble, which is a um, TypeScript implementation. Um, Stuff that already implements the code to do KZG commitments. Uh, GNARK is consensus. That's some, some of our colleagues um, at consensus. That's basically production-ready client. Um, Constantine, I think, is, is Mammy's thing. Hey, Mammy. Uh, production-ready. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, cool. Um, there's Go KZG, which Proto wrote uh, based on sort of Dankrad's kind of initial code. Uh, CKGZG, which is my port of that, they do this extra um, little bit to do KCG commitments. They also do some more, add some data availability sampling things, which is what most of the code uh, in there uh, is all about. Um, so what's the gap between where we are, where we want to be? Um, we, need, we need these functions available in an audited um, way. We can either add them, add the lines of code to our clients on the execution side and on the consensus side, or we can put, get them put into the standard cryptographic library. I'm a kind of one crypto library maximalist, really. I mean, I think there's not advantage to having multiple crypto libraries necessarily. Um, so potentially getting Blast to put these uh, extra high-level high functions in would be, be a good idea. 
and we need to do a trusted setup. And we've got sessions this afternoon on, or later this morning on both of these things, um, looking at the maturity of the available libraries and on how we might run a trusted setup um, for them. And the last couple of slides are just reference, so I'll share the link uh, with everybody and you can, you can check uh, what's out there. And that's probably uh, enough from me. All right, thank you.